Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all to our worship from St Andrews with Castlegate United Reformed Church for Sunday, the 10th of January, 2021. And if it is not too late to wish you all a very happy new year, then a very happy new year to you all. As you will see, I am making the recording this week in my study. Uh, because of the announcements that have been made this week, it was felt safer to do that. Next Sunday, our service for the 17th of January will be our bereavement service, as we remember and give thanks for those that we have lost over the last year. That service also may be a recorded service. If it is, and if you would like to light a candle for someone during the service, someone that you have lost and would like to remember, then please do prepare a candle before the service begins so that you can light it at the appropriate time. For this service, if you wish to, please join together in those parts that are in bold type. Let us worship God together. Some verses from Psalm 145. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving towards all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. We sing together our first hymn, God is love, let heaven adore him. God is love, let earth rejoice.
come before our God in a time of prayer and reflection. Let us pray. God of beauty and truth, we come with praise and thanksgiving into the peace of your presence. We rejoice in the faithfulness of your love, new every morning, and in the beauty and wonder of the world around us. Great and generous God, we cannot live without you, and with you we have nothing to fear. Please open our minds to your truth, open our hearts to your love, and open our lives to your purposes. Please bless our hearts and souls with your gift of peace in this sacred time with you. God of grace, you have shown us what you require of us, that we act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before you. In the knowledge of your acceptance and love, we confess our shortcomings. When love has not been the guiding principle of our lives, and we have been rude, self-seeking, and quick to take offence, please forgive us and renew us. When we have taken delight in that which was not the truth, and when we have kept unkindly a record of another's wrongs. Please forgive us and renew us. When we have been more concerned about attending to our own affairs, and so have walked past on the other side of our neighbour's need, please forgive us and renew us. When, far from cherishing the goodness of creation, we have added to the earth's pollution, and have not sought a just sharing of the earth's abundant resources. Please forgive us and renew us. Please assure us once again of your mercy. Please grant us the opportunity to change our ways. And please help us to know that we are always loved and accepted, forgiven and healed by you. We sum up all our prayers as we say together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our first and Old Testament reading comes from the book of Judges, chapter 16, and reading verses 23 to 31. Now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon their god, and to celebrate, saying, Our god has delivered Samson our enemy into our hands. When the people saw him, they praised their god, saying, Our god has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. While they were in high spirits, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. When they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple, so that I may lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the elders of the Philistines were there, and on the roof were about three thousand men and women watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, 
O Sovereign Lord, remember me. O God, please strengthen me just once more and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Then Samson reached towards the two central pillars on which the temple stood. Bracing himself against them, the right hand on the one and the left hand on the other, Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he killed many more when he died than while he lived. Then his brothers and his father's whole family went down to get him. They brought him back and buried him between Zorah and Eshtal in the tomb of Manoah his father. He had led Israel for twenty years. Thank you very much indeed. There are some lovely and very famous stories about the kind of transformation that can happen for somebody when they are loved. There is the really lovely story of the Velveteen Rabbit who becomes real by being loved. There is the lovely and older story of Pinocchio who becomes a real boy by being loved. And of course in a much more modern context, there are the stories of Anakin Skywalker and Kylo Ren and the transformations that happen for them when they are loved and the difference then that they can make to their world. This current lockdown is really hard. None of us had hoped for it. We were all expecting better things at the beginning of this year. And to find ourselves suddenly isolated, back at home, having to learn at home, not being able to see our friends, and to know that that is going to go on for the next seven weeks is really hard. None of us had wanted this, but of course it is necessary in order to keep ourselves safe, in order to keep the ones that we love safe, and to try to find a way of beating this virus and pandemic. During this time there are going to be many of your friends who will feel really isolated, very anxious and very afraid. And it would be lovely if you could find a way of reaching out to them and showing them that you are thinking of them and loving them. And I don't just mean through social media either, I mean tangible ways of expressing your concern by making something, say a card or a gift, and sending it to them, or by arranging to meet for them, we meet with them for a, a walk in the, in the local park, just so that you can be together for a few moments. What is really important is that we find a way of reaching out to people who are lonely and who are isolated and who are really struggling with this very difficult time. And I hope that you might find some imaginative ways of doing that for your friends so that they know that you're thinking of them, you're caring for them and you are loving them and you're looking forward to that time when you can be together again with them in school. This seven weeks does feel like a long time, especially when we're at the beginning of it, but it will pass. We will get through this. And hopefully together we will experience the joy of being together again in church and at school. We sing together our next hymn, From Heaven You Came, Helpless Babe.
share together in a blessing for our young friends. Almighty and eternal God, we ask for your blessing on all our young friends, in all situations and at all times. May they know you as their constant friend and companion, loving them and protecting them wherever they might be and whatever they might be doing. We pray that you will encourage them as they now need to do their lessons from home. We pray that it may not be long before they are able to return to school and their friends, and to church, to share face to face with each other in junior church. We ask our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Our second and New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 1, reading verses 4 to 11. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region, and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, 
Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Thank you very much indeed. I am profoundly grateful to the preacher who first drew my attention to some striking similarities between the stories of Samson, John and Jesus. The story of Samson is well known and a favourite of Junior Church. Samson was one of the judges of ancient Israel, a warrior having great strength and by all accounts also a very short temper. He wrestled a lion with his bare hands, so we are told. He dispatched the better part of a Philistine army with the jawbone of an ass. And perhaps he is most famous for having the most disastrous haircut in all of human history. His ill-advised devotion to Delilah led to his ultimate downfall and the end of his 20-year leadership over Israel. He won his final victory over the Philistines by performing for them in the temple of Dagon, a Canaanite god who was part of the pantheon of El and Baal. What this performance entailed we are not told, but we can certainly be sure that it guaranteed Samson's humiliation. He asked to be led to the central pillars of the temple, and using his enormous strength he brought the temple down killing himself and several thousand Philistines. Now, whether you believe that Samson did that, or whether it was the result of a very synchronistic earthquake, well, you pay your money and you take your choice. What is not so well known is that Samson's mother, the wife of Manoah, and we are never told her name, was unable to have children. An angel of the Lord appeared to her and told her that she was to bear a miraculous son, a son who was chosen by God for a very special purpose, and who would bring salvation to the people of Israel. Elizabeth too, as we well know, was known to be unable to produce children. And once again an angel of the Lord appears to Zechariah, telling him that his wife is to bear a miraculous son, a son who has a very special purpose for God and who will change the life of the people of Israel forever. John was certainly a terrifying character, preaching a message of repentance that had never been heard before in quite the way he preached it, and offering a baptism of repentance that had never been seen before in public, although practised quietly and privately behind closed doors. His message was popular, but we are told that people flocked to the River Jordan to be baptised by him. And of course, as we know, he baptised Jesus. John was a man who did not hide away from public opinion, but openly declared his opposition to the moral and religious freedoms of his day. And he condemned Herod in public, for living with his brother's wife. He, just like Samson, was betrayed by a woman, Herodias, and after a short stay in prison, was beheaded. Jesus' birth, as we have just relived over the Advent, Advent and Christmas season, was announced by an angel of the Lord to a very surprised and unsuspecting young woman. She too is told that her son will be specially chosen by God, a man who will bring great change to the people of Israel and who will lead them to salvation. He too was a powerful preacher, a man to whom people flocked into the wilderness to hear, a man who could not keep quiet about the injustices he saw around him, and a man who was ultimately betrayed, put through a sham trial and crucified as a troublemaker. 
in the stories of all three, Samson, John, and Jesus, an angel is sent from God to a woman who never e ever expected to bear children in her current circumstances. New life is promised to the people of the time as God prepares to act in history in a life-changing way. All three are betrayed by people whom they thought loved them and by people whom they trusted. All three faced violent and horrible deaths, but not before their missions had been accomplished. And all three have gone down in history as men who made a very real difference to the world. They each received a unique calling from God. They responded to that calling with every ounce of strength and determination they possessed, and they lived out that calling to the bitter end, regardless of the opinions of others and in the face of enormous opposition. As followers of the way of Jesus, each of us too has received a unique calling from God and has been given a unique place in the world of today. We too, in our own way, are messengers from God, bearing the promise of new life. But how do we live out that calling, especially now, during the lockdown? We'll think some more about that in just a moment. For now we sing our next hymn, Lord of the love that in Christ has reclaimed us. sometimes become overly worried about what other people think about us. Sometimes we need to look good in order to feel good. We need to be lovable and likeable, preferably with more followers on social media than others. We even deny our true selves sometimes, agreeing unwillingly with other people's views and opinions precisely in order to be liked and accepted. Generally, we do not like to rock the boat or to upset others, preferring a peaceful life at all costs. Now, there is nothing wrong with that, of course there isn't, but it betrays a one-sided view of reality. The great challenge of Samson, John and Jesus is that they were none of these things. They are all described at various points as wild and scary. They at times give vent to their righteous indignation. They speak their minds, whatever the occasion, and they all ultimately pay the price, having to face betrayal and violent deaths. Of course they do. Comfortable society doesn't like to have its feathers ruffled, its equilibrium disturbed, or its selfish values challenged. So how do we learn from them? 
Well, the overriding lesson is that we learn to accept ourselves as we really are, to accept our unique calling from God and to be true to our innermost selves. If we feel that God is asking something special from us, then we have a moral responsibility to respond to that. We shouldn't tell it to shut up or go away, simply because it doesn't fit in with our neatly worked out plans. This is where we need the courage of a Samson or a John, or indeed a Jesus. We need the courage to accept and live out what we feel in our deepest selves God is asking from us, and not to worry at all what our families or our friends or our social contacts think about our choices, especially now when we might need to make some really difficult choices in order to keep each other safe. The great lesson from Samson, John and Jesus is to borrow a much quoted phrase from adventure films to find and fulfil our own personal destiny, whatever the cost and whatever the personal sacrifices involved. We are called to make a difference in our world, to play our part in God's saving purposes, and to be bringers of light and new life. In these incredibly difficult times, that may require considerable imagination but there is always a way. One of my favourite quotes is from the philosopher Edmund Burke. The only thing that is needed for evil to thrive in our world is for good people to say and do nothing. Well, we can thank God that Samson, John and Jesus did not live like that. And they challenge us to follow their example. We come before our God in a time of prayer and reflection. Let us pray together. Almighty and eternal God, we give you our heartfelt thanks for all the many blessings of this life. We thank you for your love for each one of us, for the unique gifts and personalities that you have given to each of us for your unique call to each one of us to play our part in the building of your kingdom of love. Eternal God, we give you our thanks for good food and clean water, for safe homes and for families who love us. We give you our thanks for all that thrills our hearts and warms our souls, for those closest to us for our friends who stand by us when we need them, for those interests and hobbies that stimulate and enliven us. Eternal God, we give you our thanks for the scientists and researchers who continue to discover new ways of treating the symptoms of coronavirus, who find new ways of combating the virus, and for all those who are working so hard to roll out the vaccines. We continue to pray for that time when we might be free of this virus and can live our lives without fear and in close contact with those we love. Almighty and eternal God, as we have received so much, so we give of ourselves to you. We ask your blessing on all our gifts, in whatever way we are able to give them. Our financial gifts, our talents and experiences, our time and our energies. We pray that all may be used for the building of your kingdom of love, among us, among our communities and across our world. Gracious God, we pray for those for whom the future holds no promise, those who are struggling with burdens to which they can see no solution, especially those who are facing ruin and dramatic changes 
because of the current pandemic. We pray for those facing pressures at home, relationships stretched to breaking point. We pray that your peace and your strength will be with them. We pray for those who are facing pressures at work, those overwhelmed by the heavy responsibilities placed upon them, those who are troubled by job insecurity, those who have been made redundant or have been unemployed for some time and can see no meaningful way of sharing their gifts with others. We pray that your peace and your strength will be with them. We pray for those facing pressures with money, those who are crippled by debt, frustrated with poor pay, or unable to put food on the table for their children. We pray that your peace and your strength will be with them. We pray for those who are concerned about their health, those waiting for a diagnosis or for an operation, those struggling with depression and mental illness, those not able to live as they would like to live because of their infirmity, and those living with the knowledge of terminal illness. We pray that your peace and your strength will be with them. Gracious God, may your love, your compassion and your strength be with all those who are struggling. And we pray that you will bring them a sense of hope and the wonderful conviction that however bleak things seem at the moment, you walk with us into the future and you will always enfold us with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. We conclude our worship as we sing together our final hymn, God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. share together in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and always. Amen.